Hey Fixers and welcome to today's video where I want to uh, show you real quick how to solve the quicksort algorithm in a single line of code. So this is this is based on my uh, new book Python one-liners. It's uh, one one lesson out of 60 lessons or so uh, that uh, shows you different aspects in computer science, different algorithms, different ways of of uh, of um, modeling complicated algorithms very densely, very concisely in a single line of code. And uh, I think this skill is very important because it, it will uh, teach you to understand every si single code base there is. So if you have any code base, any Python code base, you can at least understand the single line of code. So how can you ever um, uh, understand complicated code bases if you cannot even understand a single line of code? So this was the idea of the book and therefore we will, we will dive into, into the popular quicksort algorithm uh, um, to uh, and and model it in a single line of code and this 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 will be fun i will go over the quicksort algorithm so let's dive right into it i will get rid of my face because i want to show uh, explain the algorithm to you in um in this visual manner so so but i will yeah so come back in a moment okay so uh, here's the quicksort algorithm uh, given a list the goal is obviously to sort a list in, in scan ascending order so here above we have the list with uh, some 10 elements or nine elements uh, actually yeah, nine elements and here uh, this list initially is unsorted and then we have the sorted list in the end okay and we have some process going on and the quicksort algorithm is is a recursive algorithm so um, the algorithm calls itself basically so uh, here we you have like in the in the first function uh, you call q, q sort this is a function name on and you pass the list and then what the algorithm does is it picks a pivot um, element, splits up the list into an unsorted sublist with all elements that are smaller or equal than the pivot. Okay, so this is this left list here. And uh, all lists that are larger than, or, uh, than the pivot element. Okay, so we have the pivot element 4, we pick, we pick out this element 4 and we place all elements that are smaller or equal than this pivot element to the left and all elements that are larger or than, than the pivot element to the right. And now we have, we have made some progress actually. So the list is more sorted than it uh, was previously. So this is like, this is one prog progress, but the list is still not sorted. So like, I mean, we have three lists, so of course it's not sorted um, yet. And so we need to concatenate these lists again afterward. But first, before we concatenate the list, we first recursively call the function itself. So recursively we call on the smaller sublist, on the smaller sub problem, we call the qsort function again. So now this, this function is easier than the function previously. Why? Because the list is smaller. Yeah? So for example, for a list with one element, it would be trivial because the list would already be sorted. So now this, this problem is easier and this is a common pattern in, um, in divide and conquer algorithms or in recursive algorithms that you um, solve the easier problem first and then out of the solution from the easier problem you build the more complicated solution. So assuming that our QSort routine gives us the sorted list now as a return value, now we can use this return value, the sorted list, append it to our pivot element 4 and append the sorted list from this, uh, from this uh, second sublist of all the elements that were larger than the pivot element. And now we append these three lists and we obtain a sorted list. Yeah, so this is, this is true. So if you have the element four is in the middle, so we have all elements that are smaller than four in sorted order, uh, we put them to the left and we have all elements that are larger than four in sorted order, we put them to the right. So we get a sorted list out of this. So now the question is just to solve how can we how can we ensure, so, so again, we, the Q, QSort algorithm needs to sort two lists. Now we have two instances of the sorting algorithm happening. And this is recursively. So you see, it's recursively calling itself. It chooses again the next, so this left branch chooses the next pivot element, which is one. It can be a random element, it can be the first element in the list. So you cho choose the pivot element, which is one. Uh, you place it into the middle. You place all elements that are smaller or equal than the pivot element to the left. And now in this case, it's only one element. And this is already sorted, so now we don't need to call the QSort al al algorithm again on this element in the third step. So we um, place all elements that are larger than one, our pivot, to the right. And now you see that we have two elements that are larger. 
So we and they, we don't know yet whether they are sorted. So we call the Q sort again. We choose three as a pivot element. We place it in the, in the middle. There's no element that is smaller than three. So we place nothing to the left. But there's one element that is larger, which is four. So now we have only uh, li uh, only a list with one element four. So this is already sorted. So we can return the sorted list three four. Now the sorted list three four is is. Uh, taken as a return value for this QSort function. So this QSort function re now returns the li sorted list 3, 4. So we place 1 plus 1 plus 3, 4. So we have 1, 1, 3, 4. As a result of this branch of this function call, this is passed to the calling function, which is this QSort recursive function. So we have 1, 1, 3, 4 is passed, to, is passed up to this QSort function. So we have 1, 1, 3, 4 as the sorted sublist here. We append 4. We do everything again recursively for the right branch and we get the result 8899 so we have 1134 48899 11 this is the result of the overall algorithm 11344 so this is the idea of the quicksort algorithm so and uh, yeah so if you already knew the quicksort algorithm then obviously this was uh, nothing new for you but i but i think there are many people that don't know this and that would benefit from from this in-depth discussion. Okay, so let's go into the concrete code. So how can we do all of this in a single line of code? And um, so say we have a list, unsorted. We put some elements into the list, like in unsorted order. Okay, so just some random elements. Five, four, say three, three, three. Okay, now we have an unsorted list. And now we need to define our one-liner. So we call the function Q. And we create a lambda function. This is, I mean, we want to, um, and we, we return like a sorted list. This is just a dummy value. Okay, so the lambda function takes one argument, a list, and it sorts the list recursively and it re returns a sorted list. And now, uh, if you have done this, so of course we need to replace it in a moment, but our result should be, so we would, we want to call Q on our unsorted list. And this should give us a sorted list to six, uh, actually two, three, six, and so on, yeah, until we reach the maximum element 54. So this this should be like the overall structure of our code. Now we simply have to replace the, the sorted list with a return value. So what do we do here? Yeah, as I already said, so we have the, um, we call it recursively on all the elements that are smaller than the pivot element. And this will give us a, um, this will give us basically all uh, the sublist of the elements that are smaller than our pivot. N then we need to choose the pivot. Let's take the first value as the pivot for, of the list. And um, then we have all elements. We call itself, uh, we call, uh, the, the, so the algorithm calls itself on all elements that are larger than the pivot element. Okay, so this is like now we have refined the structure. But we should only do this if. Our list is um, if our list is non-empty, so we can like for short we can simply write if if l if if l has any element in the list then this will uh, return true and then we will return this value. So I will I will give an example quickly. Else empty list. So our structure is. Let's quickly get rid of this whole thing. So this is our overall. Uh, operation which we do it's, it's called the ternary operator x if l else something else okay so this is like this operator returns one value it returns the value x if l is satisfied satisfied otherwise it returns the empty list so now in this case uh, we are satisfied with an so we we argue that an empty list is already sorted this is kind of it's a specific thing but uh, but it works beautifully, so we can do this. Okay, so uh, we assume this list is already sorted, so we ret return the empty list. Uh, the empty list is sorted, so if our QSort algorithm, if, if L is empty, then it returns the empty list. And uh, this, is, this is called the recursion uh, base case. Okay, our base case, if the list is empty, then it's already sorted, an empty list is sorted, so we return the empty list. Okay, and uh, this is also the sorted list. This is a sorted. So if 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 we pass an empty list, then our sorted list is the empty list. And uh, otherwise, we, we return x. Now we need to defer, determine x. Now the list is larger than one element. So here, basically, what we have to do is uh, is we have to we have to create a list 
of one element of the pivot element. And now we use the list concatenation to concatenate the pivot element with the result of the sorted um, of the um, quick sort algorithm applied to all the elements that are smaller than the pivot element and um, to the result of the quick sort algorithm to all, all elements that are larger. So now we simply need to define a list here. We need to pass a list of all elements that are um, smaller and we need to pass a list of all elements that are larger than the pivot element. Okay, so now we, uh, we use list comprehension to accomplish this x for x in, in the list. If, so I will explain it in a moment, x is smaller or equal the pivot element. So the first element. So this is our first part. So let's ju just look at our list comprehension statement here. Okay, so we fill the list with all elements x in our list, but ignoring the pivot element, which is the first element. So we use slicing to all access only the elements that are not the pivot element. So from index one to the right, um, we access all elements and we go over all of them. We place all elements into the list, but only if the elements are smaller or equal than the pivot element. Okay. So this is our first list comprehension statement. We place all elements that are smaller or equal to the pivot element into the left quicksort uh, function. And now we place all elements that are larger. So we just use copy paste and place all elements uh, from the list that are larger than the pivot element to the right. And then in the middle we have, we have, we also have a list. So we have as a return value, we have three lists and we do use list concatenation to concatenate all lists and we print the result here. So let's check if our algorithm works, execute this. Yeah, and we see the result 2, 3, 6, 33, 33, 45, 54. So the list is sorted. It, also, it should also work on, say, an empty list. The empty li list is empty, of course. It should work on a list with similar elements. I mean, of course, what could go wrong here? It works on a list that is already sorted. Say, we have element 2. And so it returns a sorted list. So this was a complicated one liner. It's now, it's really a long li liner. So it doesn't f even fit the screen here. So you can break it. Of course, you can break it uh, into three lines if you want or two lines. You could do this, you can do, yeah, break it up. But I mean, this is, this is really the most concise uh, way I have, um, I have uh, been able to come up with to represent, to do this conceptually, to, execute the quick quick sort algorithm okay so this was the idea we have the we have the list we pass pass all elements that are smaller than this this losing using list comprehension smaller than the pivot element to the left and all elements that are larger to the right and then we call recursively the q sort function so this is in the code it is here so we use the q sort function we just call it q okay so this was the one liner already i hope you learned something out of it check out my book python one liner it will make it will bring you to mastery level it will give you a new superpower which is understanding and creating new one liners that are powerful that and um, um bring you uh, a lot of fun <laughs> if you if you if you if you are able to actually write every single every algorithm and stuff in a single line of code then uh people will actually be very impressed by your Python coding skills. So check out the book and thanks for watching this video. Bye.